Hey, hi everyone. This is Cynthia Chicaldos. I'm the webinar organizer, and I just turned on the recording because we uh, record everything and then put it onto our YouTube channel. So we're gonna start in just a moment because it's 7:01. Um, but we'll just hang on a few more minutes here. Um, oh, I found it now. Blur my background. Yeah, my office is a mess. Okay. Um, Too late. Everybody's seen it. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, Mac, they were at, at, a lot of them are entering now, and I really need to. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take over. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You got to make me host first. Coast. Oh yeah, hold on. Okay. Okay. Um, hi everybody. This is Cynthia Chicaldo. So I'm the webinar organizer and part of the North San Joaquin Valley chapter of the Native Plant Society. So uh, I'm going to do a little short intro here, and then Mike, who's also from our chapter, will talk a bit about CNPS and our chapter, and then I'll introduce our speaker, and she'll give her a talk, and that, then I will take questions. So here we go. Um, so we've got, this is our 16th event. I can't believe it. It feels like we just started. We hold um, these every month except December. And we now have our, our first speaker, who's actually at CNPS, uh, uh, staff at CNPS. And she's going to give an overview of Naturehood, which is these uh, native plant gardening webinars that she has created. And uh, so get your questions ready. Um, so this is the agenda. I'm going to give you a quick overview of our webinar series. Mike's going to talk to you about our chapter on CMPS in general. We have a speaker. And just to remind you, the event is recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel, uh, which is at NSJV underscore CMPS. If you have any questions, put them in the chat, please. If you want to say um, where, what area you're from, that would be helpful, I think, to know like what your gardening environment might be. So maybe those of you that are willing could, could put that into the uh, chat. So we've had quite a few webinars. Um, you can go to our YouTube channel and watch them all. Our most popular ones have been about gardening, but there's all kinds of things here. Um, and if you are interested in being a speaker, let me know. We did several um, talks about putting native plants in bouquets and, and uh, Reese and things like that. Anyway, I know you can't read this as fast, but it'll be on YouTube. And so these are all the past webinars. And today uh, we're doing Overview of Naturehood, which is the CNPS Native Plant Gardening webinars. Uh, next on April 8th is The Power of Native Plants by our speakers, Juanita Salisbury. She's a landscape designer specifically for native plants and has been extremely successful in creating Native plant, uh, native plant gardens uh, in the city of Palo Alto and getting the city to do a lot of stuff for her. So that's, she'll be talking about that. Um, the rest of the dates in 2024, I don't have a speaker yet, but if you have an idea of who a speaker would be good or you want to be a speaker, just send me an email. This is our YouTube channel. Uh, 162 subscribers, 5,000 views. So um, again, all our webinars are recorded. They're typically the second Monday evening of each month. They're always the second Monday evening of each month so far. We don't hold a webinar in December. Next webinar is April 8th. So here's my email address if you want to contact me. So now I'm going to pass it to Mike, and he's going to give an overview of our chapter. 
Yeah, let me go ahead and uh, steal the uh, screen. Okay, okay. Yes. It's warning me I'm going to take the screen away from you. All right. Um, and before we start, I do want to uh, to point out that I've seen Juanita Salisbury's talks, and uh, they're cool. She's got a cool story, and she is uh, she um, was able to kind of start from nowhere and uh, start up a whole pollinator garden series of gardens in Palo Alto and or Menlo Park. I forget which one it is, but the point is, uh, it's it's a great series. So um, at this point, hopefully you see my slide. And I just put in the uh, the chat a bunch of information that uh, that is relevant to what uh, I'm going to be saying so that you can go in and, and uh, just copy some of the stuff that, um, that I'm going to talk about. So um, I wanted to give you an introduction to our chapter, the North San Joaquin Valley chapter of the California Native Plant Society. The California Native Plant Society is a statewide organization, and you can join it for a regular individual membership of $50 to receive uh, the Flora and Artemisia magazines, get benefits such as discounts, certain nurseries, sales and such, and the ability to join two different chapters of CNPS. If you'd like to join North San Joaquin Valley chapter and one other, such as Santa Clara Valley chapter, the Sacramento chapter or others, it will be an option when you go to the link on the slide, which is cnps.org slash membership. Um, and we hope that you join us here in North San Joaquin Valley chapter and whichever other chapters you feel a kinship with. I said the, chat, the membership was $50, but there is an option to choose other price options and higher membership levels for are available for those who are able to help the organization even more financially. It's a great cause. The regular membership link is right here, cnps.org uh, slash membership. And I think I went one slide too much. Let's see if I can, yeah, there we go. Um, so, uh, sorry, I'm getting all confused now. The regular membership link is right there, cnps.org slash membership. Remember, this, this is the link to join up. I should point out that the long bar on the bottom labeled other is for those who want to choose uh, another amount. I actually started with that. Um, the thing, the point I wanted to make was that if you can't afford $50, you can actually choose other and start as low as $25. And that's for everything. That's for the whole enchilada. You're, you're an official member. You get the magazines and all that stuff. So um, we want to make sure everybody gets to take part in this, even if you are not normally able to afford things like that. Um, and now uh, I wanted to point out that the uh, the sixth edition of our newsletter was sent out a few days, uh, actually last last month, or oh, just, just a few days ago, actually. Um, volume six of the newsletter uh, of the Oak Branch was sent out to all of our members via email. The issue looks but actually, this is volume seven. Sorry about that. Um, the issue looks back on our own. Oh, but there's a whole bunch of stuff in this chapter in this one. Let me know if you if you didn't get it. Um, and uh, and bar and then I wanted to point out that we're having a field trip coming up. Embark on a journey through the countryside as we meet at the visitor center at Knights Ferry Recreation Area. Explore the the beauty of spring discovering the vibrant local wildlife, the wildflower blooms and encounter the diverse wildlife that mark the beginning of the season. After our exploration, we'll take a scenic drive along Wilms Road to witness the endangered vernal pool blooms at the Central Valley that the Central Valley is known for. Marvel at the breathtaking displays of white meadow foam and popcorn flowers, adding an extra layer of wonder to our uh, nature-filled adventure. Please bring water and binoculars if you have them. And the reason for that is because we collaborate with the Audubon Society. So they tend to send uh, their their uh, tour guides out there. And so you can not only learn about the flowers, you can learn about the birds as well. So it's always fun. Um, 
And then I should point out that we need to do everything by email. We recognize that there are some people who are actually prefer U.S. mail. And for those who are inconvenienced, we do apologize. But we don't yet have the financial or volunteer base to put the newsletter out that way. CNPS has asked that all chapters find ways of reducing carbon and saving all that paper is one of our contributions. If this is a true problem, let us know. But so far, no one has complained. And if you are on our list, you should have received the newsletter. But uh, if you somehow got missed, um, you can go ahead and uh, contact me. My email address is in chat, uh, cnps.nsj.membership uh, at gmail.org. Uh, it's, it's in there. So if I got it wrong, it's, it's, it's correct in the chat. Um, and we do want to get it out to everybody. So not everybody who gets the newsletter is a member of the statewide organization. And what we're doing is we want everyone to be able to uh, learn about native plants. That's our mission. But um, but unfortunately, there's a it costs a lot of money to advocate on a statewide level for native plants, and that's why one of the reasons why it's uh, we really ask that you, uh, if you can, join the statewide organization. Well, oh, I see what the problem is. It's just passing right by. Why care about native plants? We are finding out more and more each day about the true need to restore our environment uh, as much as we can. The man who has been trying to explain the need for native plants with the most eloquence is Doug Ptolemy, a professor from Delaware. He's written three books on the subject, uh, all of which circle around the theme that we have been damaging our environment dramatically, but there is hope in native plants. 95% of all birds feed insects to their young. Caterpillars are an important component of that diet. And caterpillars cannot live on na non-native plants with very few exceptions. Native plants are critical to the ecosystem and a backyard with no native plants, and that is a devastatingly high percentage of them, are ecological dead zones. Planting native plants in our yards helps moths, butterflies, and native bees and other pollinators. Therefore, Birds and the web goes on and on. Our city need not be devoid of uh, butterflies, moths, and native bees. And for more information about this, you can watch a one-hour video that knocked me over like a brick. This was a talk sponsored by our local Audubon chapters just this past January. The link, as I said, is in chat. Um, and finally, if you have any questions for Anne Marie's uh, during Anne Marie's presentation, please add them to the chat. And we'll do all the questions at the end. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Cynthia. And I will be in chat for those with questions or comments. Oh, Cynthia. Uh, sorry, I had turned off my sound. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so. Uh, so I want to introduce Anne Marie. Um, I'm trying to put the spotlight on her. You know, things are not always in the same place. Um, so um, all right, well, I'll figure that out later. Anyway, uh, she's uh, the horticulture programs manager at CMPS, and uh, she studied watershed management and sustainable community development at Prescott College, which is in Arizona, northern Arizona. Um, these are pictures from the uh, that she sent that are probably from some activities they've done. Um, so her job is to support native plant communities, which is us, our communities and our people. And she uh, was at Rescape as the executive director. And this line, I just had to put this in. She wishes to be a redwood tree. So maybe we can work on that for her. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm gonna pass the screen to, to uh, Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie, you wanna take it, please? Great. Well, glad to be here. Thank you for, for putting these all together. I am going to steal the screen 
and talk about some of the things that we have at the state level on offer and think and what we're doing with them, how you can get involved. Oh, as Cynthia mentioned, my name is Anne Marie. I'm the Horticulture or Stewardship Programs Manager for the State Office of CNPS, uh, which means I get to spend a lot of my day thinking, writing, working about native plants, which is uh, one of the best things that I can be doing. I grew up in Southern California and lived in a small town called Valley of Enchantment in a very arid forested area, and then spent a good portion of my career in Arizona doing watershed planning and repairing and restoration. And I came back to California and live in Northern California. I now spend my time between um, Cazadero and the Russian River and Oakland and get to work on plants. But I started with Bay Friendly Landscaping Gardening Coalition, which is now Rescape California as their executive director for years. And I'm glad to be here working on this. Um, one of the, we have a lot of different things that we do in our program. And a lot of them are resources that you can access to help you learn more about native plants to as either, you know, for your own garden or for careers. Yes. One of the best ones that we have is this Naturehood Gardening webinar. The first Thursday of every month at uh, 5.30, we have a one hour varied topic, free to the public webinar. We started these during COVID when we couldn't go out and talk to people about the things that we normally would have been going out and talking about. We couldn't go to chapter events. We couldn't go talk at nurseries. So we started this online naturehood gardening webinar. It started with something that we wanted to do anyways. COVID and being home gave us the kickstart for it, but it's a free webinar where we talk about all kinds of things about plants and gardens and nature. And we bring in different specialists, the best available specialists in different fields. Um, we'll have anywhere between one and three speakers on the topic each month. And you can always register on our website. I've got the link here on the screen. And we can also get it over to the chapter so that you can they can send it out to you if they'd like. Um, we talk about different things every month. The last month, it was after the storm, what to do when you're cleaning up from prepping for some of the big storms that we've had going through when we've had all the downed limbs. Uh, Next month, we are going to talk about the new cowscape that's going to be coming out. And I'll share a little bit more uh, about that later on in this talk. We're gonna talk about what they're gonna go through, what to expect, what it looks like. It'll be one of the first real kickoffs of the new cowscape. Um, but you can go on, you can find them, you can find whatever is happening. Um, and each month, there'll be a new topic ready and available for you. There it is. So you can go on also to our recorded area and let me see if I can, I'm just gonna pop out and see if it'll show you. Nope, it doesn't wanna change. I was actually gonna go out and go into our YouTube channel. CNPS State Office has a, a YouTube channel where we have all of these talks saved and you can you can do them by most recent, you can do them by most popular, you can search different topics. We have um, how, to, how to design landscapes, how to consider and go through a plant list, what you need to know if you go to a nursery, um, good bugs, bad bugs. Uh, we have one from Saxon Holt on uh, dry gardens, California summer dry gardens. We have ones on, you know, understories in, for under uh, big trees. What do you do if you're under a redwood, if you're under an oak? Oaks don't like summer dry guard, summer uh, water. They want to be dry. So what do you do when you're doing those type of things? One of our most popular ones is on dogscaping. What do you do if you have a dog and how do you consider your, your landscape 
to to support what you want from it and what and to make it a healthy happy place for your dog as well so there's all kinds of topics you can always go on a few days after the talk and you can find the talk readily and available and then if you sign up for them after that talk we'll also send out resources from the speakers we'll send out a link to the recording we'll send out various things that the speakers have talked about and that way you have access to all the materials afterwards so i'm going to go in a couple of other educational opportunities that we have um, this is our most popular recent one is the california native plant landscaper certification we developed this in coordination with the Theodore Payne Foundation, our friends down in the LA region. And it is the only landscaper training focused on native plant landscapes. It's really set up to help people who are going into or changing into servicing native plant landscapes. It's really meant to, to help them learn the skills to move from a turf-based landscape maintenance into a more difficult or, you know, more varied landscape. They're, we currently are running them in Northern California. CNPS runs them from Santa Barbara North. So your chapter would be included in that range. Theodore Payne runs them from Santa Barbara South. And they do their, their in English and Spanish, we do that as well. They do theirs primarily, I think at their site and through a couple of others. Ours are primarily online with, at, and we have ones occasionally that are fully in person, ones that are partially in person, but we do have a lot that are fully online, partially because Northern California is spread out in a whole different way than the LA region of Southern California. It is a lot harder for somebody who is in a smaller rural town, like I often am in Casadero, to be able to access education like that in the same way where you'd have to be driving quite a while to get to a training each day. Uh, there are nine sessions. The sessions are two hours a piece, and they're taught by people with degrees in this who have been working in this field for decades, for the most part. And they go over how a landscape of this type develops, um, how to prune these type of landscapes, what is irrigation, what are we looking at in soils, um, choosing plants, um, IPM or integrated pest management, so the Northern California ones, we were funded this year for six different sessions, four sessions in English, two sessions in Spanish, and they're available online. We have one session of English that we're still accepting some applications for, and we have one and a half sessions of Spanish that are still open and available. So if you know people who speak Spanish and could use the training in particular, it would be a great one for them. Um, Oscar Lucario, who uh, teaches the ones in Spanish this year, is a terrific instructor. He does a lot of really good, not only scientific education, but story-based telling and relating it back to ethics around the land, which are really terrific. We also have an online Cowscape nursery training. It's paused right for the moment as we are changing its platform, but we've been hosting it in coordination with CalWEP, California Water Efficient Partnership, a nonprofit that helps to work with and service uh, the water districts around the state. They help them to put out education and do, and do broader work. Um, these are our recorded online, go at your own pace uh, modules that train how to work in a nursery. They talk about how to um, how to choose plants, how to maintain plants, how to sell plants in a nursery setting. And we're getting ready to change over the platform on it and also add in a couple of modules as well as update some of the materials. It was filmed in Southern California. It was filmed with our friends at Tree of Life Nursery. And they did a great job, but there are some parts that are a little more Southern California centric, and we want to expand that beyond those. So it's an online where you take a module, you take a test, you move to the next module and take a test. And for people who are going to become long-term nursery professionals, it's a great way to get the ongoing CEUs for your CNN pro 
credits. And if you're running a nursery, it's a great way to do some introductory training for staff. If you're just interested in what it would take to, to work at a nursery or considering whether you'd want to start a nursery because we need lots more small nurseries all around the state, it's a great way to really get a look into that world and to what it takes. So all three of these types of education are free and available through the website um, with the exception that the nursery training is paused while we figure out that changing over to the new platform. But they're all available, they're all free, they're all easily accessible. Um, as many of them as possible, we're doing either closed caption or in the case of some of the, like the CNPLC, we're doing it in English and in Spanish. We're trying to get a, them out as broadly as possible and to get as much participation as we can. And then here's a look at our new, uh, what's gonna be happening with our new Calscape. If you haven't been to calscape.org, it is a really amazing database of native plants. It's a great database that catalogs the native plants, where they're located, who they, you know, how you use them, what are they co-planted with well, how do, you know, do they need sun, shade, low water. You can go in and you can go into Calscape's advanced features right now and help to do all these lists. But as we rebuild and relaunch Calscape in the next month, there's a real um, opportunity to dive in a little bit deeper. It'll be much more user-friendly. And we're hoping that it'll give a whole new experience for people who haven't had a chance to get too far into Calscape so far. It'll also have additional features where beyond the, the plant part that you've seen, it'll be even easier to find nurseries to see pictures of the plants in in the in a garden situation instead of out in nature, um, and to find landscape professionals like the people who've been through the CNPLC or other trainings like that, you'll be able to search for landscape pros in your area who are landscapers, or designers, or um, arborists, all kinds of different features and filters. Or if you work in those fields, it'll be an opportunity to put yourself on there and to be found by the people most appropriate to the work that you want to do. So we're really excited to have Calscape relaunch and become even an even better tool. Um, right now it gets about, I think 1.3, 1.5 million hits a year. And we're trying to continue and grow that experience so that it serves people even better. We're really excited by the team that's been working on it and what they're coming up with. You'll see it'll have a lot of, it'll have better photography. It'll have an opportunity to contribute to the photography as well. There'll be a way to show off your gardens, um, to show the, the plants in situation there and to better see how they relate to other plants in a garden setting. It'll have deeper information on the plant details You'll be able to see not only how large they grow, when they're dormant, um, they're going to have a lot of details to help you figure out which ones are going to work together, what are gonna be work together well in your yard. And they even have between the co-plantings and the ability to save them to lists, a really good way to put together a starter list for your landscapes. And if you put together a list and save it in Calscape, you can print it out in a way that also helps you to give get a good start at a maintenance schedule and a maintenance calendar, which is a really important thing to have with landscapes. There'll be you know, photo garden or photo galleries of different gardens, so different areas, so that you can take a look at what what in your region is working, what are other people doing, what grows well in that type of situation. If you have a garden that you're really excited about and you'd like to share. It might be a way to help share some of the information about your garden. And we all, the reason that the, the garden tours are so popular is we all love to go and take a look. And this is a great way to be able to browse some of these same gardens. Give you a, a more in-depth look at some of the gardens with their descriptions, the links to the plants that are in each of them. Um, I know we often, when we're doing uh, talks about different 
landscapes. We get people stopping and asking, you know, what is the yellow flower? What is the orange one in back? And this gives you a way to get a really good look at those types of gardens and take a link to the plants themselves. And then this is kind of a look at what you'll see with being able to search for professionals working in your in this field or to promote your work if this is what you do. But we get calls all the time for people looking for, they've put in a new native plant garden, they want to install a garden, they want to do sheet mulching, something like that. Who is working in their area? And it's a tough one because we're our staff is fairly spread out. A lot of us live in smaller uh, rural areas and we're not necessarily near where the people are calling from. Um, I can tell you in Guerneville who, area who's going to be working on it, but I can't always tell you who's going to be working on it where you're at. So this is a terrific way to really filter down for the best need for your landscape. It's also where you can find, if you don't have a favorite nursery already in your area, it's a way to find the nurseries in your area, the plant that they're carrying, the plants that they're carrying, um, their hours, their availability. It'll be a great way for nurseries to get a little bit deeper into the profiles. There is a way right now. This will give us a, an opportunity for them to show off even more. And for you to kind of check their full inventories. All right, I went a little faster than I thought I was going to, but I figured we're probably going to have a lot of questions and I'm gonna back up on this or not. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna restart from the beginning. And so we can go in and I'll put up the webinar part and we can answer any questions. Well, um, no, no one's actually put in a question so far except for Cynthia. How is the nursery info updated? How is the nursery info updated? It is updated by the nurseries. Um, we have ongoing relationships with a lot of the nurseries there. We've been hosting for the past couple of months, regular uh, meetings for nurseries to figure out how to go online and put in new information. And then when they, if a nursery um, is participating, all they have to do to update their plant lists is to go in and just copy the plant names into the, from their inventory right into the, um, there's an input tab, just copy it and it'll upload it and connect them to all the different plants. Okay, I have a couple more questions, uh, but please, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in chat. Um, one is, uh, I happen to know that the next seminar or next webinar you have going is the new Calscape, unless, Maybe. because I know it's been put off and off and off, and I was wondering how, <laughs> how the new Calscape is doing, and uh, are we going to see it next month, or what do you think? We are going to see it next month. We did have... A couple of, yeah, let's go up to some of the looks of Cowscape. We did have it put off a little bit longer than we'd hoped and anticipated. It is a really big technical project um, with many layers in the background of this database. You know, at its base, it's a database. But beyond that, it all these filters and all these additions, um, there was a lot of bug hunting and making sure that everything really did connect and work, but we're committed to having it launched by the beginning of next month and to be rolling it out fully in time for the next naturehood and for the Earth Day celebrations and Native Plant Week in April. Yeah, it's it's such a, a great website. I hope everybody's gotten a chance to, uh, to really work with it. Um, and then uh, the Caliscape nursery training, you said that it was free and available through the website, but I'm a little confused on which website. Is it CNPS or is it Caliscape? It's through CNPS. The Calscape, the name we have to work on, it's a little bit of a misnomer. It's not really on Calscape. Um, it is available through the CNPS website, except that it is paused right now where we change the back platform. Um, it is free to the public as, and so is the the CNPLC, the landscaper training. So you're saying if I go and look for it right now, I'm not going to find it, but... You'll, what you'll find is a, a place that says, you know, kind of bear with us for a couple weeks. <laughs> we're we're changing the background. 
and and chances are when it comes back it's gonna have a new name <laughs> well it'll still be nursery training nursery training okay because and you'll I mean, see that, it through our i'm sure it'll go out through our e-news that sounds really cool because i mean one of the things that that people are always complaining about is not knowing how to for example prune uh uh what i mean what do you prune what do you not prune what needs to be pruned and you know stuff like that and so um that that's one thing that so far hasn't been really in the uh cowscape when you when you look at the different species so yeah no, really it cool. has there but if you put the lists it if you save a, a list and you go to print it out in as a spreadsheet and you print out the the more complete spreadsheet version, it does give you when to prune it, what it needs for water, all of those kinds of things. It does. Um, oh. Yeah. We have a couple of really other exciting projects that'll come into Calscape, but they're they're just starting and they're in the works a year or two out. Yeah, we're going to be adding in butterfly net data so that there'll be a, a much more complete but, uh, pollinator data, um, butterflies and bees, I believe in Calscape. And then we are working on a project to do propagation protocols to collect and make open source the propagation protocols for as many native plants as we can reasonably and to connect them back to their, their Calscape um, listing. So if you fall so, in love with a plant, not only could you find the nursery that is carrying it, you could also find out how you could propagate it if there's not a nursery near you carrying it. So you're making it even more of a one-stop shop for uh, information on every native plant species then. For all the different that levels that people like. want to drop into native plants, we're hoping that this will give everybody the, the level of information they're ready for. Um, Kate Schmidt Hopper says, uh, look, she looks forward to seeing the new Calscape website and thanks you for the hard work involved. And um, May is asking, how would I be able to share upload photos of plants that I've taken? Oh, well, if you have ones now, we have a team working on that. Um, you can email me at abens at cnps.org and I'll try to connect you with that. I'll connect you with our team that's working on that piece. I believe Maya Argamon's the one mainly working on it and she is um, out of office this week, but I'll get you connected to her. So I can tell you that our uh, president of our chapter, uh, Cece Hurst Hart, is uh, a gifted, she's gifted in so many things, but she's a gifted photographer. And uh, I, I happen to know that one of the local alliums, so this is a subspecies um, that I think was in the Del, Del Porto Canyon or something like that, um, but it's, it's a, a rare onion. And she's got an unbelievable shot of it. And I happen to know that I was looking at the other shots that you have on there. And I know that hers would, it, it dazzles the others. So... I'd like to be able to uh, to go ahead. I, I want I want to tell her how to do that because I think she deserves to have have that photo shown. We actually featured it in our newsletter. I mean, it was it was a really really neat uh, really neat one. That'd be great. We all need more reasons to take good <laughs> plant pictures too. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. I um. Cynthia, did you have any other? Cynthia was talking about the uh, the dog, uh, the dog one. Um, yeah. No, I was just saying that I said I should watch that one because my my dog for some reason absolutely loves 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 um, mallows. Uh, oh, really? I mean, I have to protect them, but it's just mallows. The other stuff is not a problem. Um, so. Uh, I had a, a couple other questions here. Let me, let me see. Well, I, I've changed over. I, I got to change over to our, our recordings for the Naturehood are all on here on our YouTube. And if you do them by the most popular, you start off with uh, Doug Tallamy's. Doug, Doug, Doug Tallamy did a Naturehood? He didn't, but we have it recorded with the others. The first Naturehood that we have, oh. though, that's our most popular Naturehood so far is through with Saxon Holt, um, who's terrific. But and then we have the uh, 
gar native garden chats, which is one of our versions of naturehood on dogscaping with native plants right here. And that's Leo, our, our mascot. I was going to say that, that Doug Ptolemy, uh, um, he's, he, he shows up even in California. He, he lives in Delaware and he shows up in California a lot. So he's got some have... really good information on biodiversity. Yeah. Okay. Um, but... I, I, I had a couple more questions. Yeah. So. Mike, yeah. Um, one is, uh, I mean, really, you guys, you attendees should be asking the questions, but since you're not, I'm going to ask them. And uh, can gardeners create their own lists and then, you know, manage their lists? Yes or no? Yes. Gardeners can create their own lists in Calscape. You can create all kinds of different lists. I have a whole variety of them saved. And you can you can print them out in a variety of different formats. You can print out, you know, a deep, uh, a, a smaller version of a um, spreadsheet. You can do a larger version that has maintenance information. You can print out plant signs. You can print out plant labels from your lists. Um, um, what? How are the plant labels done? In the Santa Clara Valley chapter, we did uh, we did labels from a spreadsheet and it was the common name on the top in large print and then the scientific name underneath in smaller print. I think right there, I don't know on the new one exactly how they're gonna look. You'll have to check in at the Naturehood, this, uh, the one beginning in, in April. Uh-huh. Let's see. And then um, I, I just my uh, one other question here was, uh, so, um, you know, this CMPS Facebook group is really an incredible resource of photos and information. There's like 70,000 members now. I don't know if you're in it. Um, and some of the photos are just amazing. I mean, you know, in the landscapes. And um, I hope that you'll maybe might find a way to tap into that group. And obviously, they're not all members since there's 70,000 of them and we're only like 12,000. Um, of course, everybody's not active, but anyway, I just pointing that out because I'm always just stunned every day at the amazing photos. Now, you know, they're all doing the wildflowers now, and it's just crazy. It, there, um, it is an amazing resource, the Facebook group. Um, there's a huge amount of knowledge, and for the most part, people are so kind and so helpful. Um, we find that with the naturehood crowds that that show up every month that they talk to each other in the chats and they're so helpful and so kind with sharing their knowledge. And so, so deep, such deep knowledge in some of the people who are on both those platforms. Um, since we have uh, time, could you go dive deeper into the inspiration thing? What, what you can do to show off your own garden? Um, as far as what I'm just, I know you said basically you could, but, I'm curious, what, what can you do? You said uh, maybe you take photos and share them. And, um, and what is, what, what is that, that going to look like? Well, even in the current Calscape, you can go in and you can add in photos and show the, and of anything that you have. Calscape functions very much as a wiki in a lot of ways. So you can go into a particular plant and into where it has photos and you can actually add in photos to some of these as well. Um, it's been a while since I've done it and I think I have to be signed in to do it. See if I can figure out how it was. Um, it's a little bit tougher because the presenting part, I've got these bars that are in front of the pieces. Um, let me see if it's under there. Hmm. To figure out how to do this. So there, it is a little clumsy doing it this way, but as you can see, people can go in, you can show them off, you can have different levels of copyright, you can put in um, currently a plant-based photo, but we will have the opportunity to have full gardens shown off in the 
new version that launches next month where you can have, you know, the photos from your garden. You can have um, plant labels along with them. You can tag the plants and have them connect back to each one. Uh, on the, we had talked about plant lists on here. I've got a bunch of different ones that we've looked at in different areas. Here's a, uh, only one plant. I must've been showing that off to someone. Um, here's a series, a setup that has a uh, redwood area. You can go in and you can, as you can see, you can um, print plant labels, print plant signs. You can export to a spreadsheet, to a detailed spreadsheet. You can add all plant lists together. Um, you can order them by all kinds of different versions. It's a great way to take them to your nursery and to, you know, if you have a plant list that you're working through, it's a way to give them to, if you're working with a landscape company or a gardener, give them to them. Um, and it was my impression. Of, it was my impression that the my plant list thing was pretty much just for your own thing. It wasn't to share with anybody else. These ones aren't in the same way for sharing. Um, I just come back to it because since we were in here, um, right. Cynthia had asked, but there will be a platform beyond each photo or beyond the photos for each um, plant where you can eventually, with the new one, where you can put in the your garden inspirations. You can add in photos here. I see. Cool. And so and are are you going to be the one giving the uh, the presentation on uh, the new Calscape? No, it's Maya and Jessica. Jessica Woodard is our Calscape product manager. I've been, been I've been in touch with her. Um, Jessica is the primary person working on it. Maya has been working with her as well. And and um, I had noticed that uh i had i've been asked actually when way back when um i saw the the bay area garden planner mm -hmm. i uh i tried to i was talking to somebody and they said oh talk to jessica woodard and so i went ahead and sent her an email and i said hey you know what needs to happen is the central valley needs to get the next one because um pretty much everything's been destroyed over here i mean they, they've just gone and scraped it from one side to the other and done all this agriculture and development and stuff like that. And there just isn't much left of what used to be here. And I just felt that that we really needed to have the the Central Valley um, next. And so um, then uh, more recently, I contacted her and it turned out that that's what they were doing. But unfortunately, uh, we our three counties, uh, Merced, San Joaquin and Stanislaus really weren't represented yet. And so I worked worked with all of these experts in our chapter and uh, sent some uh, some suggestions on what would be good plants for, for gardening and stuff like that. Um, so uh, hope, but I, I know that uh, not every other, some, some counties are still not really represented and you guys are talking about maybe having kind of a, not quite the by county like you have in the Bay Area right now. Um, for at least for a while. Well, our goal is to have it statewide. Um, you know, and and it'll, it's slow, but it will get there. We'll eventually have all, all the pieces. Um, you know, our limitations are the same as most things, uh, right. time and money. But mostly yeah. it's that we just don't have as many people to work on these pieces on in our staff, but they are working on getting them broadly statewide. Um, and the part that will be coming up that'll probably make the most difference in the in the valley is that the propagation protocols piece that we're doing, while we're going to try and do all kinds of different plants, our real focus is on ones that are pollinator um, supportive plants in the full phase of their life, and that are important in the areas like the Central Valley, where we really need to see some changes in what's been happening in the agriculture and development of those areas. 
So we want to be able to find, to really focus on plants that will support the, you know, a better habitat in those areas. We know that we need more small nurseries and we need more growers in those areas and that we need to find a way to get as much information out to people so that they can consider that a viable option. Well, that's the one I was talking to her and I said uh, that our, um, in sorry about my phone here, um, in uh, Oakdale, uh, Blossom Hill Nursery, uh, Carl Hill is uh, our kind of our, our local native plant nursery. And uh, she said, oh, give me your, his email and I'll uh, make sure he's involved. And so I sent a, an email to him and said, hey, I'm letting you know that I'm, I'm letting you Calscape know who you are and that he's, he was thrilled. So oh, good. I'm glad to glad to see that, that that's they're getting them together. Um, yeah, we hey, um, the, hey, this, this is Cynthia. Um, can I I just want to say something which is Emory, I'd like to go back for a moment to Naturescape and ask you how do we um, let's say we have a something we really want to know about that we think would be a great uh, webinar. Can we just ask you to do it, or what? How, where do you? Where, how do you decide what you're going to do? How did you get decide into each of these things? Or was it just sort of? I mean, the way I do the webinars is I just choose stuff I'm interested in. So I don't know how you do yours. <laughs> uh, well, we put together a, a program for the year, and start looking. You know, start looking at topics that we think are really important that we're hearing people ask about a lot that we think need to get out there and are timely. Um, then we source the best available experts we can find on them. And then it, when things do come up, when we have uh, a speaker who can't make it for personal reasons of the last minute or um, other things that might throw it through a loop, we have a couple of ones that we... Uh, people that we know are great to put in or we reach out and around um, the surviving the storms was actually us being a little reactive to what was happening with drowned branches and trees all over during some of the big storms that came through but if you have topics or, and or if you have speakers um, please let me know we'd be glad to try and work them in um, there are time there are topics that overlap you know, things around maintenance are always going to overlap and we'll try, we try and do maintenance on a semi-regular basis. But outside of that, we try to go into more specific topics. So we're, all, there's plenty to keep talking about. Uh, I'm going to send you a, a few suggestions based on, uh, you know, on our, our own webinars and what, what we found people are really interested in. And we already know who could do this the talk. So I'll, I'll just email you that. If any of you right. in the audience who are very quiet, please put something in the <laughs> chat so we know you're there. Um, I know. Um, you know, you, this this is our opportunity to ask for a, a webinar on, you know, a gardening related topic. Um, so you might, uh, we can we can just email you, right, Anne Marie? Please, yeah, please do. Um, and what, what was your email? Tell, tell, tell us your email. It's abens I'll put it in at cnps.org, and I'm putting it in there right now. Oh, actually, the people watching the webinar can't um, mm -hmm. can't uh, see this. So it's abens a b e n z at cnps.org. Cnps.org. Yes, um, you can yeah. find me okay. through the staff yeah, page. So since we still have a few minutes left, and uh, I mentioned that I put in our uh, newsletter, and also, of course, you can find it very easily online because if you go to the Naturehood uh, website, um, literally, I think it comes up and talks about upcoming webinars, and it talks about all the recordings. And if I could just read a list of some of the recorded uh, ones, all about the understory, aromatic plants, backyard community science, choosing plants, dogscaping, dark, dry gardens and drought, Gardening in a drought, gardening for kids, gathering plants and creativity in the garden, growing good food, lawn replacements, uh, maximizing habitat, milkweed, monarchs and you, native plants in the built environment, native plants in art, planting in the rain or plant, planting the, I guess it's planting in the rain, seasonal aesthetics, uh, seeding connections, seeding wildflowers, 
urban gardening, a balanced garden, bring birds to your garden, firescaping 101, gardening 101, getting rid of garden pests in the natural way, um, healthy soils 101, maintenance through the seasons, nursery shopping 101, plant babies 101, uh, planting 101, plant selection 101, pruning 101, seeds 101, super blooming bouquets, and watering 101. And all of those are already recorded and already available on their website. And then the 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 one that we just missed the seventh, so that was March neighbor. Actually, I I have a question. I tuned into that one and, and uh, I was there for ten minutes and nobody ever showed up. Did did that happen? The March seventh one. I wonder what happened if you had a wrong link or something because that I don't know. I got it. I got. I literally time. tried two or three different versions of it. Um, literally, they had sent oh. uh, they had sent an email saying. Hey, uh, it's going to be happening like an hour, and so I tried that link, and then I tried a different link that um, that was available somewhere else. And every one of them, I was there at five thirty, and then at uh, by five forty five, nobody showed up, so I left. I'm so sorry that happened. I don't know what happened there, but it is available. It's on the <laughs> the recording here. Oops, and that's that's very odd. I I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> What happened there? Um, but they are all recorded. They're all available for, um, you know, for resources. And it's one of the best things we do because we get to talk to experts in all kinds of fascinating fields. And most of the time it goes off without a hitch. And sometimes, on, unfortunately, like what you experienced, Mike, either it just does not work. We had one last December where I was trying to do it, unfortunately, from our, our staff party with somebody whose email didn't work and that he then couldn't launch his uh his his talk and so it's just the two of us talking about trees <laughs> so sometimes it all all the tech part goes very wrong but most of the time it's pretty good well, I, I, you... Henry, I, I have a general question because people who aren't into native plants ask me this and i do not know how to answer it maybe some of you in the audience have a better answer which is they go well, I, I'm interested in native plants. Where do I start? And you know, the the amount of information out there is incredible. I mean, where where do you start? There's just so much. You know, there's uh, iNaturalist, and there's all the different uh, websites of the different. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at Angus of Borrego a lot. You know, on Facebook. I mean, oh my God, the photos are incredible. Um, you know, there's all the chapters. There's you know CNPS, but there's there's just so much out there. Um, and, you know, you go on YouTube and it's, it's a huge amount of stuff out there, some of which is contradictory, especially the thing about, uh, you know, about um, um, cardboard, you know, cardboard, right? So there's a, there's a big fan base for cardboard and then there's a lesser but quite big, you know, quite, you know emphatic fan base about ba how bad cardboard is. Um, but so what would you say if someone someone says, yeah, I really want to do native plants, but I don't know anything, where should I start? You know, it depends on who they are and how they learn best. There's a lot of resources, like you said, out there. Um, you know, we've talked about all of these ones. We've talked about Calscape. But one of your best resources, if somebody is new to native plants and really wants to learn, is to find a good nursery, one that you really like. Um, you know, if you're to go to a chapter plant sale, if they have them to go to, um, you know, to the people who work with native plants and find somebody that you really enjoy talking to, uh, on, uh, Calscape, we do have a list of a lot of nurseries, definitely not all of them, but if you have a nursery that has native plants, somebody there is usually really knowledgeable and really helpful. And they're one of the best ways to enjoy native plants and to have a positive experience is to have a good relationship with a nursery that knows what they're talking about. But if people learn best by by listening and watching, we have all these topics on available. Um, it's some it's a easy way to cut to learn about native plants in whichever part that they're interested in, whether it's through birds or through butterflies or just how to plant or how to choose plants. Um, but finding somebody you can relate to, 
and finding the people at the chapter, it's a great way to have a resource readily available. You know, it's interesting you say that because I'm one of the members of our chapter is Carl Hill, who's the owner of uh, Blossom Hill uh, Natives, Native Plant Nursery. And he actually has given a webinar in our series um, just doing just exactly what you talked about. It was it was really good. And he's also done it for the local garden clubs, which don't know that much about native plants. Um, he's probably a gem. No, he, he's fantastic. And he's just so friendly. And his wife, they, they run that nursery. And um, so I'm going to suggest a topic, though, which is always, always a difficult one, which is, you could do a whole series on getting rid of Bermuda grass. That is the worst. Everybody has their weed that they love to hate, I think, um, depending on where you are. Bermuda glass, the devil ivy, the English ivy and is mine right now. Um, and it goes back to what you we're talking about with whether you use cardboard or not, but yeah, we could definitely do a, a talk on removing difficult uh, invasives. Yeah, that, that are in people's gardens. I mean, I'm, yeah. Um, here, Bill McCormick has a question. Uh, a question a lot of groups ask about what natives are appropriate for street trees and getting cities to ab adopt them. Are there suggestions or is a talk on this topic possible? You know, we um, we could potentially do a talk on it, but we also have a group that is working on street trees and other things like ordinances. And if Bill or someone, anyone else is interested and you can get hold of me and I can add you to the group as well. We have a shared Google file of all kinds of resources. And now I'm going to say one more thing, I know, uh, which is uh, relevant to something like 40% of California residents is they live in HOAs. And it's getting worse, you know, with all these new developments or HOAs. And of course, they, they, I mean, you know, the HOAs put in all the plants. I mean, it depends. I mean, in mine, um, we're just a bunch of ranch style houses and all we have is a pool. So, uh, but, uh, you know, fighting HOAs is really, is really important. Um, to, if, if we want native plants to proliferate because so many people live in these types of organizations and typically they fight everything. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Well, HOAs can vary widely and learning how to work with the HOA for on your own property or in the larger group is a, is a big topic. Um, and we can consider adding in one on that also because that's that's a hard one. The challenge. Yeah. But there are HOAs doing it well, and maybe they'll talk to us about how, how and why they do it well. That would be great. Okay, I think we're kind of winding down. Um, anyone have any last comments? Uh, put them in the chat, or you can, you can unmute yourself and just talk. I mean, there's only a few of us here. You want to unmute yourself? I don't know. I think I can do unmute everybody, but I forgot how to do that. Some nice else. casual chat. Mm -hmm. I th I think Oops. unmuting everybody might be a mistake. Well, I'll just let them unmute themselves when they're ready to talk. Uh, there's a way you can actually unmute everybody at once. I, I know, but that's not always a good idea. All right. Okay. But they, we invite them to talk. At, I mean, because they might have TV on in the backyard or something like that. So it'll just get confusing and chaotic. I have no questions, but just thank you so much for putting this on. This is super helpful. Um, I'm just starting to learn and get involved and become a member. I'm with the Native Plant Society in my local Bay Area, as well as up where I'm from in the Sierra Foothills. I think it's the red bud chapter um so just wanted to express thank you for that i really appreciate it and this is a great starting point and um really enjoyed this talk thanks Haley. thank you for coming
Anyone else? Any last uh, words of wisdom, Anne Marie? Well, I think the only, the other thing I can offer is just you know we have a we have some terrific staff and we have people in the chapter who are really knowledgeable. And if the people here don't know either of those groups, please reach out. We're usually glad to talk about native plants. I think Bill said that uh, I had a bad link and it sounds like he was able to uh, to get into that talk. So, oops. Yeah, I don't. It's okay, kind of so interesting I think we're going to operate. We're, we're going to end the official part of this meeting, so I'm going to stop the recording, but you can stay on and uh, if you want and and talk about anything. Okay, I'm ending the um, recording. Wait a minute. I don't remember how it is. Looks like for the most part, mm -hmm. we have the, the audience is turning in for the night. I'm looking forward to, to seeing the, the new housescape. That, that's going to be, have trouble finding where the end recording is. Um, I've seen uh, Jessica did share with me kind of the the um, the beta version of it. To because I I tried to give a I gave a talk on uh, Calscape with the idea back in January.